So, uh, okay. And after we will see also a new approach to estimate air quality uh, using the noise based model. <coughs> So why noise is important and what is the standard level and how many people are impacted by noise pollution? Noise is the second most important pollution can after air pollution. Can you a little louder? Yeah. Sure. There you go. Yeah. Eating here. Okay. So, the, as I said, noise is the second uh, most important pollution after air pollution, and um, the standard level during 24 hours is 55 decibel. Uh, for the outdoor and 45 decibel in indoor. So with growing urbanization, we have more people that impacted by this pollution. And we can say the statistics show one in four European lives in the area and suffer from noise pollution. So more specifically, the health outcome of uh, noise pollution is cardiovascular disease, a sleep disorder, hearing impairment, learning impairment, and recently there are a study that shows a relationship between diabetic type two and noise pollution. Okay, as you know, traffic is a major uh, noise pollution in urban area, and in other hand, forty percent of Californians' population lives near highway roads. So it's necessary to define the noise level to be able to manage and reduce the population exposure. It, is it impossible to measure noise everywhere for the vast area? So we need the noise modeling. And in addition, noise modeling allow us to uh, check and test different traffic scenario to arrive the you know, good scenario to have a standard level of noise. Uh, noise I'm, can be I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, on the Zoom, we can only see, we see your slides um, in the sort of note uh, set stage. We're not seeing the presentation mode. Uh, okay. I'm wondering if you could share. Yeah, so in Zoom, I think if you go to swap uh, screen, I think in the in Zoom, not in the PowerPoint, uh, there should be an option to. Or alternatively, I think you can reshare the screen, but share the. Uh, I tried to new share, but it doesn't work. Let me share my desk. Okay. Uh, it asked the sign up to the room and uh, you just click away from that box. Mm -hmm. oh. Could you see that? Start now. No, we, we we still see the uh, yeah. sort of the non presentation mode, unfortunately. Let me close the.
Maybe we could click on Dave. I think I think somehow. Yeah. 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 So now, now, now you can see. Now we can see it. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for informing. Okay. Okay, we talked about that. Okay. So the noise model can be divided in three categories. The static cyclical model based on land use regression that needs the collection data for the noise measurement and also the predictor variables. Machine learning model is similar to the Land use uh, regression model need uh, uh, the collection of the data for both, but it can better uh, capture nonlinear relationship between the predictor. And also, we have numerical or acoustic noise model that calculate the propagation, deflection, and absorption of the noise wave. We select the case study in south of Los Angeles in Long Beach, because in this area we have different land use as an industrial, residential, and commercial area. And also we have different category of road, motorway, primary road, secondary road, residential road, all to the service. So now I'm gonna uh, show you four simulation uh, with four model. Uh, we have one a land use regression model using GAM, and uh, we have a machine learning model that we use Xtribus, and we simulated noise level by two uh, acoustic model, CatNai, which is a commercial model, and one open source model, Harmon Harmonized. And also, we compare all simulation results with the TNM result. Uh, simulated by research company how low. So let me briefly explain that uh, these three uh, models. As you know, better than me, the GAM model is similar to linear regression, just instead of a beta coefficient, we have a flexible function. And also in, for this model, we develop a uh, an approach to select the best variable using a leave one cross validation. Each time we withdraw one observation point and we calculate, the, we predicted the noise on this observation point with the other uh, point that, that means we rerun the model. And uh, we, examine, we examine all the variables one by one to find the best variable that result in the smallest RMC. For the machine learning, we use XGBoost. Uh, this previous study by uh, Shaoji Yin, uh, and there's a paper in 2020 that compare XGBoost with neural network, random forest, and linear regression, and show the performance of XGBoost better than other to estimate the noise simulation. So SGBoost is a decision tree model with idea uh, boosting or improving a single weak model by combining what with the other thing, other weak models to create a strong model. So there's a lot of acoustic noise model here. I just present one of them that I use in CATNA A. Uh, this emission noise model uh, called RLS90 is a German emission model. Normally, all kind of the equation they find is based on experimental. So as you can see, this equation of the noise emission depends on the traffic, early traffic, and the fluid composition, which is the percentage of the truck. And then they add other equation to, to consider the speed, road surface, and road gradient. 
Then you have the emission along the row. You can use the equation of propagation to find in each receiver point what is the, the noise level. And also we have to consider the uh, absorption and reflection of the upstack near the source as a building. So we make measurement by walking um, uh, along 17 routes in Long Beach. We have more than 6,600 points with distance of 10 meter. Uh, we try to uh, design this point to cover most of different category of the road and the line road. 70% uh, of this uh, database used for training the GAM and the machine learning model, as you can see in the brown point. And remaining 30% was used uh, for test that this model. The um, acoustic model don't use the measurement of the noise to predict the noise level, but need the traffic data, road network, and the outside data as building building footprint and the height of the building. So we need the traffic data. We don't have the traffic data for whole network in the small street or residential area. So we have to simulate it. Uh, we use the SUMO model, which is an open source free software that based on dynamic microscopic and car pulling uh, design. That means the model try to find it, the model has an uh, algorithm behavior of the driver and the inter, inter, interaction of the car. So it's the advantage of this model is, uh, it's, it can easily link with the open street data and you know, extract all the network data and the traffic in, and infrastructure uh, data as a the traffic light and the stop sign, other from the you know, from open street map. And the simple version, we can just define uh, the vehicles entering the network and the number of vehicles inside the network. Model itself created a random trip for the car in the network. And but after we use the calibration uh, in the highway by the CAT trans data to have accurate traffic volume, speed, and density in the network. So here is the result of the traffic data. We have you know, more than 1,000 um, vehicles per hour in the highway and very low traffic in the residential area. We just simulated traffic for the 9 to 10 a.m. because when we check the real data in Long Beach, we can see between 9 and 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., the traffic stay steady and fixed, doesn't change. So in this slide, I present the best variable of the GAM and Xtubus model, and also the input data of the uh, uh, acoustic model. And as you can see, the traffic volume Show up in all the model. Uh, XGBoost also consider meteorological variable as pressure and humidity and cloud cover. We have only humidity in the GAM model. The, the XGBoost also have three variable for uh, related to residential. You know, we have a residential area, residential road length, and also oh, distance to the residential roads. Other variable is motorway length and secondary road length with the commercial area. And uh, in the GAM model, we have distance to different kind of the road category. We have the distance to the motorway, to the residential road, uh, tertiary road, primary, and also we have minor intersection in the distance of uh, 50 meters and building area in distance of 20 meter and the vehicles of speed. So interesting that uh, 
Exhibus doesn't select vehicles as a speed as an important variable. The variable in acoustic model is pretty same. We have a volume speed, the percentage of the truck, and road network and road uh, surface. And also we have the, the data of the uh, of stack as building. So as I said, uh, I call the TNM model HL TNM model because I don't simulate and I just only use the this data. So uh, the traffic they use for this model is different from us. Is there some reason why you believe cloud cover to be an important predictor? Like, does it muffle the sound or something? Or can, can be important because cloud cover can change totally also a, a, a you know movement. So that's also can impact the loss. I mean, if, if you have cloud cover, you have less radiation. The movement of air is you know stay more stable than you know when you have the sunny day. You know better than me. Sorry, to follow up on that question, um, yeah. I mean, would would weather though, I, I guess in general, I mean, this is related to the cloud cover and and you know the traffic that you're observing, but that's going to be a function of weather, I would imagine, or do you just, uh, you have a measure of the hourly traffic volume and that's a better indicator? Uh, it depends, you know, in the acoustic model, we don't have, at all the meteorological variable, but we know for sure the pressure and humidity can affect the you know the movement of the noise. But, but yeah, here the cover show up also I think indirectly can affect you know the movement of the, the air. Okay, great, thank you. So here. Our the simulation of the noise level by all uh, five models. You can see the CADNA A has an acceptable uh, noise level. We have it, you know, the blue one show uh, until 50 and the light blue show until 55 decibel. We have the minimum uh, noise level in the residential area and we can also capture the high uh, noise level in the highway. And if you look in the GAN model, we have, you know, we, we, we can see mostly the green points that show the, the noise level more than 60 decibel, which is very high. And we can see uh, model uh, overestimate the, the low range noise. And here is HLTNM totally overestimate everywhere the noise level. You can see after what's happened. And we have extremes also that result show reasonable. Only I uh, have a concern about the highway because mm, I don't have my flesh here. So if you, if you look at the highway here in the right side, we can you know see the highway in the GAM model and TNM model, but here in the extremes, he cannot capture, you know, this high noise in the high. And harmonize also, also can show, you know, the, the variation of noise level in different areas. So if you want to see more accurately what's happened, here is the density of the noise level by each model. The, the yellow curve is an observation and the other color is a model. So here in for the extremes, we can, See, extremes cannot estimate the extreme part, you know, the very low range of the noise and very high. I mean, in the, in the highway. Uh, Cat night uh, performance is better. We can see it's cover the, the highway, but it's just not good in the residential area and very low noise level. So, harm, harm noise, it can cover all range of the observation. And but only concern is it, it uh, simulate very high noise level at the highway. So if you look the GAM, it's totally you know miss the, the the low and the high 
range of the noise pollution. And it, this one is a TNM that totally, you know, overestimate all observation. So if we want to look what happened for each model in each category of the road, we can see for the motorway, we have only 68 point to test. We can see that here is the observation and the nearest model is a Kata A that we can see can, can um, correctly estimate the noise for the highway. We have Exhibus that shows pretty similar or a little bit underestimate the noise, but uh, this is only, uh, this is only the point we have as the measurement point. That means, okay, we have a training point just near this, you know, test point. For other areas, I think the, the exhibit cannot uh, simulate correctly. Uh, we don't have any major endpoints to test. So for the residential area, we can see, you know, the exhibit and even Katna and GAM can provide the acceptable result. For the primary uh, road, we can see that uh, the harm or noise can create a better result than other models, but exhibit also is acceptable for the primary road. And for the secondary road, we can see that all the models underestimate the noise level in the secondary road, but exhibit and it's closest to the, to the observation. For the tertiary road and the service road, you can see all the model can, you know, uh, except TNM can provide, you know, acceptable and acceptable result. Okay, now you want to have a look to correlation between the model. You can see the highest correlation happened with exhibits and the observation, 0 0.85. And then we have the the GAM model is 0 0.7 and CAT9 is 0 0.68, two worst correlations for TNM 0 0.58 and 0 0.53 for harmonics. So what is the limitation of study? As, as I just mentioned, uh, for the GAM and the machine learning model, we have a measurement point that train the model and we have just beside the point of the test, you know, that can improve the performance of this kind of model compared to the accuracy model. We don't have any measurement of noise level put in this model. Um, and okay, the second limitation is unlike the first one, the acoustic model can uh, have the data of uh, Fluid composition, that means the percentage of traffic, a, a truck, you know, heavy truck and passenger car. But we cannot define this parameter for the GAM and actual model because we don't have this data in each point. And other problem of the acoustic model is, is totally ignore the methodological condition that the exhibit and GAM can consider this parameter. And I think in our study, we have limited number of measurement, the highway, and if we can have more points, can help the both model, excuse and can. So the overall, I can say the excuse and CATNA can provide best performance for the noise modeling in urban area. Exhibus, uh, can create better performance in secondary, tertiary, and residential road, uh, while CAT and I perform better on a motorway and service road. Also, exhibits require a large of uh, data collection and extract a lot of predictor variables, but it's easy to use because there's a package in R and Python. Unlike uh, the acoustic model needs the pure input data and it's easier to simulate, but we need the license and we have to pay for it. 
So just for your information, this is a map of noise for uh, part of Los Angeles County and Orange County. We simulated by like Katma A in the other project and maybe maybe you can be interested and use it for your epidemiology study. I have I have a question. Um, it, it, maybe maybe I'm misunderstanding the problem, but but would it be possible to include like the acoustic model outputs as input into the the machine learning model? Okay, you mean acoustic model? You mean the the noise level? Yeah, the, the predicted noise level from the acoustic model. Could you include that as the input? Because it seems it's sort of in the theme of like you know combining models to try to get better predictions. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, because it seemed like that the acoustic model did a great job getting the full range. But the, the more statistical models would always be kind of estimating in the middle. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't use that one, but yeah. This is an option. Yeah. Okay, second part of presentation, I want to show you a new approach to estimate the air quality using a noise based model. And see, I'm working on it. So, normally, if you want to know the uh, quality levels, you, you have two approach measuring or air quality model. You know, for the measuring, um, air quality is very expensive instrument that needs very high maintenance. That's why we have a very uh, limited location and quality. And you can see in the map. The all this air quality station in EPA, uh, for example, AQMD that cover air quality of four country only have has a four station near the roadway. So if you're interested, uh, uh, define the uh, air quality in the vast area as a city. You need you need the uh, air quality model. For the traffic, the chain model that include the traffic model or data if you have, and this data using the emission model to provide, you know, the, the pollutant emitted by the vehicles in each segment, and then use this data in dispersion model. But we have many challenging um, step in provide the traffic data and also the emission model normally has very high uncertainty in this chain model that can go over 100 percent so we propo propose an alternative uh, approach that can uh, simulate air quality using the noise data because the vehicle's emission and the noise from the car are the same source. We can, uh, based on multi-frequency of the noise, we can estimate the engine activity, the speed of the car caused by tire or air turbulence, and also both noise and air quality depend the uh, meteorological condition. So, Noise is not just you know the average sound energy during a period of the time that we call LIQ here. Each noise has a uh, multi-frequency. Uh, here you can see, you know, this is a, for example, for one second, you have the noise sampling, and we can see uh, the different frequency from 12 hertz to 16 kilohertz. Uh, it's dependent the how we measure the noise. There is a there is a multi-frequency noise measurement in octave band on one third octave band. In the octave band, you have 10 different frequency. In one third octave band, you have 32 different frequency. And we, we know that this frequency can present the activity of the car from previous study that shows. You know, the engine noise can vary between 100 and 200 hertz, you know, just here, very limited frequency. And the noise we hear 
in the high frequencies comes you know, from the 500 to two kilohertz. I'm sorry, can I ask a question related to that? Would, would you be able to tell from the noise measurements if you have like more or less electric vehicles because there'd be no engine noise? I, yeah, we can we can say that. Yeah, because we have more, you know, more increasing in the in the low frequency. No, no, we have less engine activity and more, you know, speed. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. it's possible to. Yeah, even even I I can just show you. In, uh, I think in three of the slide, even we can distinguish between the gas and gas. Oh, cool. oh, wow. so cool. <laughs> and the Satari noise, it seems like it would be different between a semi and a passenger car. Yes. Yeah. And do you know the ranges on those? Or... I, I can show you. Yeah. Oh, just, okay. Yeah. yeah. I just, in two next slides, I showed previous study that yeah. showed that, you know, the how we can distinguish between the frequency to, to see the different activity of the car or, you know, the composition. Okay, here is an example about the speed. In the left one, you can see the uh, multi frequency well, for the vehicles that with the, the 130 kilometer speed, and the right one is 150 kilometer. You can easily, you know, see for the high frequency, I said between 500 to 2 kilohertz, you know, the high frequency increase highly. And that show okay. We have we have the same car, but it is this higher. So that that was your question. You know the in the low frequency, the the sound pressure level is different for even the passenger car and heavy the heavy duty truck. Even the diesel engine is much louder than gasoline. Just yeah, just we need uh, to you know, be able to distinguish between all the car that pass at the same time. That's the problem. Okay, now I show you uh, an, an estimation about the speed and the acceleration, even with the same noise level in. Both core, we have the same noise level, you know, but the frequency is different. And we can define, the, you know, which case has higher speed and which case has lower speed, but, you know, high acceleration. For example, if you look at the difference between low frequency and the high frequency, that show the case we have high speed and no acceleration. And if the difference between low and the high, because low frequencies so show the engine activity. So the little difference between the high frequency and low frequency show the low speed with high acceleration. That's very important to, to calculate the emission from the car. And even, you know, most of the emission model just based on the average speed, and we don't have this. Okay, we talked about that, but just I want to mention some advantage of the, this model uh, compared to a quality model. Okay, a quality model, we need the traffic data. Most of the time, it's very hard to find the spatial temporal variation of the traffic data. But with the noise estimation that we have, you know, with the noise measurement, we can have direct data of the traffic in our, you know, frequency you know, data. And there's the other complexity of the traffic modeling. Uh, we need all the network data, the traffic light, and you know all the sign, and even the timing of the traffic lights can be different during the day. The driver's behavior change a lot. Actually, we use the Sumo model. The algorithm, you know, behind the model is for driver behavior of the German people, not US people. I imagine it's. Each country has a different behavior after driving. And also there is a computation and aggregation error. In the emission model, okay, we know the emission model has a very high uncertainty. And also there's a different, because for the 
emission factor, we use the car in it. KC dynamometry and the laboratory, and we measure, you know, the, the pollutant and we create the emission factor. But we know in the real world, it's, it's different. And we have very limited car for this, provide this emission factor. But with the noise measurement, you know, we can have actual data of each car in the real situation. Okay, there is very uh, rare and you know limited data about the other kind of the uh, pollution from the car. I mean, most of the time we talk about the non-exhaust uh, emission of the car, but we have also the evaporation emission, non-exhaust, and the rover, also the dust suspension that we can capture if you have a noise meter and the air quality at the same time. We can have in you know, the relationship also for the dust dissipation on the you know measurement of the Charcoal down a asphalt tunnel. It's going to make different sound in the car. Yes, it? yes. Even the acoustic model, you, you you have to define the surface, road, concrete, asphalt system. Yeah, very different. Yeah, there, there is a correction. The model that considered all the yeah road surface. And for air pollution, you know, most of the air pollution we use is the Gaussian model that provides the, the air quality in uh, each hour. But with this uh, approach, we can have the, the result in each minute. Okay, minutes. okay to start, we use the black carbon. Oh, I should put my. First, we use the black carbon device and also the, to see. Uh, uh, okay, I, we know the black carbon uh, is caused by combustion engine, especially diesel, but there's other source of the you know residential wood burning power station and the forest fire. It, our instrument is able to distinguish between this source and can't, you know, measure uh, sampling between one second to 30 under second. We have also used the noise meter uh, that can capture one octave and one third octave uh, noise frequency in one second sampling. Okay, here is our mm, measurement. Uh, just we attach the noise meter and black carbon uh, instrument to the station of AQMD for 24 days. And we have complexity of measurement and define the interval for this measurement. Because if you go, you add the interval, you will miss all the peak of the noise that comes from the car. And if you, you know, you have a very short time, you, the measurement error of the air quality instrument goes very high. So here is an example of 10 seconds and one minute measurement of black carbon and the correlation with the different frequency. You can see 10 seconds, you have a bad correlation between frequency and the black carbon. If you just go to the one minute, the correlation goes up to, a 0 0.45 for uh, high frequency. So best compromise for uh, uh, measuring both noise and the air quality is one minute based on our measurement. Okay, we collect the data of the black camera frequency for 24 days is one minute. We had also data of NO2 and PM2.5 uh, for one minute from the AQMD. We, we just see the variation of black carbon is greater than PM2.5. And we try to determine best approach uh, is the, we can simulate this data by linear regression or the machinery. We can go fast because we don't have enough time. Uh, here is all variable we have. We have the frequency 12 to 16 car, and we have some uh, average indicator of the noise, five, uh, metal condition from instrument and three metal con condition from the station. So we use the XGBoost 
to estimate the NO2 black carbon and PM2.5 by minutes. I repeat that because it's very different from what. And we use 70% of data to train the model and 30% to test that. We can see we have a very, very good uh, performance of vegetables to uh, predict the tree pollutant, but we have a very good performance for the NO2. Okay, if you, if you compare the linear regression with vegetables, you can see vegetables has the performance that is really better than the linear regression. So uh, even for NO2, NO2 is a better marker of the trophy, you know, most of the NO2 concept from vehicle. So our correlation arrived to 0 0.86. And this value is 0 0.78 for black carbon, 0 0.71 for PM2. As I said, the greater variation of black carbon can, you know, cause the better uh, result of the issues. It's just the scatter plot of the exhibus and linear action. We can see the R squares is 0 0.74 for the N2, just N2. Okay, and now I'm just focusing on N2 because we have a bit better result in N2. So we try to um, select this variable for the uh, between our variable. So we use the method that remove all the variables with 90% uh, of the correlation, with more than 90% of correlation. So I just color, you know, between this all low frequency, we use only 40 hertz and the same for all on the color. So here is the result after uh, using the less variable. Before we, we had 46 variable and after selecting best variable, you have 22. The best model with 22, that means you select the variable. The result is pretty same. Doesn't change from the uh, 46 variable model. But if we don't take one frequency between them and take the average of the, you know, each group of the frequency, we have a better uh, RMSC. And RMS again can decrease if we just remove all the uh, all all the situation that the wind doesn't go to the station. And I mean, I just separate the time you have the wind to that goes to the station, and we can see that RMS is significant, significantly decreased. So, okay, just for conclusion, uh, okay, we develop an approach that can estimate a pollution in one minute by analyzing the noise measurement and the uh, multi frequency and meteorological data. This approach is advantageous because the, the ease of the use and the low cost of noise maintaining device compared to the air quality instrument. We find the, the best interval to, to measure the noise and air quality at the same time is about a minute. Also, mm, there's a possibility to, uh, to distinguish between the car category with this model, and we can, uh, we can distinguish between passenger car, truck, and the bus uh, with the sub frequency of noise. And also, if we want to use a quality and we don't have the, the traffic data, we can measure the noise to provide all the data you need for the emission. We can estimate the speed and also the fluid composition, all the category of the car and using the emission model and then inject it to dispersion model. Uh, thank you very much. And I would appreciate all team helper, Reddit, Scott, Chaoshe, and Ralph for the effort in this project. If you have questions, I'm ready. Great. Thank you, Masa. Do we have any questions mm -hmm. in the room or online?
I know we had several questions throughout, so you may have answered all of them. You, you asked about EV vehicles. Tell us where you're going with that. Well, I, I was just wondering, um, you know, like you were mentioning, I'm thinking about the changing the, the differences in the fleet, and that could be used in the emissions models for, for you know, something like K-line kind of models or something. Um, I was just wondering how the noise data maybe could be leveraged you know, as there gets to be more and more EVs on the road, could the noise measurements help inform the changes that we're seeing in terms of the fleet, the, the EV fleet, or the internal combustion fleet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is totally possible because the difference between the EV and, you know, it's even more than the, you know, the passenger car and the truck. We don't have the engine, we don't have, you know, all the low frequency noise. Yeah. And yeah, it needs to develop a model. Are, are the features of the noise from the tires similar between EV cars and, and other cars? Like, I think EV cars are heavier, so maybe, maybe. Yeah, it, yeah, if non exhaust engine can be higher for the EV. And I don't know about, how about the battery, you know, the provide the emission. Not at the end, or, but if the vehicle uh, you have more tire, you know, mm, traction and yeah, more exhaust particles. Yeah. And, you know. how, how dense is the, the noise monitoring network? Is it, is it similar to the air quality monitoring network in density? Is the, the coverage around LA, for example? For the? For, for is, are noise measurements taken sort of uh, uh, side by side with the pollution measurements? We don't have noise. No, there's, I, I don't I, know. no, there's no noise measurements going on. I saw um, different, you know, project. It was in Michigan. I was very happy they had the noise at the same time of the you know, air quality. <laughs> but when we ask the data, the noise meter doesn't work at all. You know? <laughs> well, well. Yeah, but I, I don't know. There is other project to make sure they're not. I have a question about the noise of trains, because sometimes trains run right side the freeways too, or like right down the middle on the I 10. You know, I imagine you could tell the difference between a train and a car and its emissions. Would that be correct? Yeah, the emissions are very high for the rain banks. You know, the the railways, you know, noise of it can go to 130. It's very high. Yeah, I'm yeah. just wondering if they're along the freeway and you were doing the monitoring along it, would you hear it? Oh, probably. Yeah. yeah, but you can remove it, I think. Okay. Yeah, just remove the noise from the, the results because it's different. It's not the same. Yeah. Well, kind of would add to. You know, that's when they add to the pollution, but knowing that, oh, there's a train going by at this time, you'd be able to hear it. You go, oh, we have to add to the emissions or whatever. Yeah. I'm definitely just wondering how mm -hmm. that is there or used it. Yeah. Is it possible, you know, to then you work with the, the car, you just use the killing data, you know, to remove all the other noise source? Oh. Yeah, because oh, I think okay. the railway is noise is different, mm -hmm. provide different frequency than. Yeah. So is it, is it standard to do like a, a pre-processing where you remove like airplane noise or other sort of like other noises before you? I, I didn't do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I I was there for a long time. I never heard the, the airplane. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I know there is a. The, Airport in one week. But I don't think this is the way you know they yeah. land. But the horn of the car. That, that's how That one you can you probably remove because ninety percent of cars have a key to that. Don't ask me why. <laughs> yeah, it's the different frequency, but I don't think it can show up in the model. In the okay. In the well. The yeah, extra noise mean worse traffic. Yeah, in, yeah. In, in the in the observed data that you were working with, I, I saw that there was quite a range of observed like uh, levels of sound. Um, 
when, when there were maximum values, were they like short periods of high sound or long periods of high sound? Or, oh. I, I'm just kidding. Any of you say with your observed data, I'm going to try to get into this question. Like, is it mm -hmm. when you see high levels, is it just because it's really, really noisy? Okay, I think then you have congestion. Yeah. Less noise. If you know, there's a more rate field, that you have less noise because the, the speed is a very important parameter. Of noise. Yeah. Then when you have, uh, you know, mm, it depends, but then you have very uh, high speed level of the car. You have the mass. It's not depend the number of the car, depend the number of the car and speed. You know, just think of other sources of noise. But if you had a constant noise background, like you know, there was a factory or something in the vibes, you'd almost have to figure some way to reduce it or take that out of it. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, I think your noise pollution is more important in Europe and here. I studied regulations. Yeah. Here. No. Yeah. 73, 75, 80. <laughs> yes, they are the same. Level. But even if you look at uh, the noise model, each country you know, in Europe has a noise model. Okay, you have here in TNN. Yeah, but that's a lot of power. You know, even Cat and you can find maybe. 12, 13 different noise emission model in this one. Mm -hmm. But we are still working on the relationship between equality and noise. You know, the, if we can have the data traffic at the same time, that's great. But there's a solution we can, you know, distinguish, you know, provide a model to to capture the category of the car. If you have a traffic data, you don't have it. Do they have any, to kind of get the issue of data again, do they have any measurements? Like if, if you're very neat to have, have a co-located you know, air quality monitor and the noise measurement and those um, devices in the street that measure the cars going by, yeah, yeah. Really I apologize. I, you know, if I start setting up, I have we have a glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for your presentation. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Mr. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Have a great day. Bye bye. That's great, but we don't have. I don't have access.